For today's topic, we are going to explore okay, one of the um, uh, interesting uh, teaching of the Buddha, and this is called the most the four most human desire. Have you ever wondered, you know, what are the four common things that every human being are looking for, and it's very difficult to achieve? Okay, and one of the millionaire asked the Buddha this question. Okay. He already become successful in his career. He very rich, and you know he also one of the Buddha supporter. Somehow he was wondering, okay, what would be a basic human desire that everyone should look for? So there are four things, okay, that are wished for: desirable, agreeable. The thing is, it's very hard to get in this world. Okay, the question is, what are these four things? And that's the topic of today's talk. Okay, um, so let's start off with the first one. Okay, the first one we call it wealth. In this particular wealth, I mean financially wealth. So financial wealth refer to material things. Okay, money, house, cars, food, shelter. Okay, you name it, clothes. Okay, and that is financial wealth. So how far do we have to go? to be success in financial wealth. What is the highest financial wealth in your opinion? You may have heard of the word financial freedom. When we talk about wealth, the highest wealth that human being can get is the level where they attain the financial freedom in life. Financial freedom means you know, when you reach that point, you don't have to worry about financial issues no more in your life. Your life all set. Okay, that means you can enjoy life, do whatever you want to do. Don't have to worry about work, making money. There's no more stressful on making more money. So that job is done. That is called financial freedom. You know, in this world, 10% you know, of world population living under uh, the income of less than 1.9 US dollar per day. Per day. Unbelievable. We're talking about 700 million people who live under the income of 1.9 US dollar per day. This is very troublesome. If people are poor, it's very difficult for them to live good life. If the country is poor, it's again, that country has a very difficult time okay, to provide good quality of life for people in the whole country. So poor is one of the biggest obstacles in country development in personal development. Once you are poor, you cannot have good education, you cannot have access to uh, a good school or medical treatment. So poor is the problem. So financial freedom is something that everyone should keep in mind. Okay? There is an old saying that people used to say, it is okay to born poor, but it's not okay to die poor. Okay? We don't have to follow our ancestor, if we born in a poor family, it doesn't mean that we have to die poor. So if you allow yourself to die poor, that means you don't develop yourself. You accept your destiny and you accept that, you know, I'm supposed to be poor. Instead of doing that, you can think oppositely. You can challenge yourself a little bit and by developing yourself in any way you can to overcome that poverty. You may think of many people in this world who have become very successful financially okay, at the very young age. You know, some people get rich you know, under the age of 40, become financially free, financially secure. They have a very good life. Okay? Um, you may think of this person. You may know, you know this is very, one of the famous uh, billionaires. Okay? His name is Jack Ma. Jack Ma was born in China. You know, he has a very tough time when he was young. You know, when he applied for the job, you know, most of the job that he applied you know, would reject him. Okay? So he couldn't get the job that he wanted. Okay? But Jack Ma, born in a modest family, somehow he made his way okay, from that situation. He never gave up until he reached to the top. You know? Under the age of 40, he became a billionaire. He is the founder of Alibaba, as you may know. Okay? And now he's the second wealthiest person in China and the 17th wealthiest person in the whole world. His story is very inspiring, so I suggest that you, you know, 
hopefully find time to study uh, his background a little bit. It may help to inspire yourself to become successful in life, I mean financially. Uh, for those who want to pursue wealth, who want to become rich, okay, these are four things that you need to keep in mind and, and, and perhaps practice these four virtues. The first one, diligence. Diligence means what? Okay? You put your life into it, whatever you want to do. You never go lazy. Okay? You think of, again, this, the story of Jack Ma is a very good story. Okay? When he was young, you know, for nine years, he has to get on his bike for 27 kilometers to get a job by providing tourists a tour so he can practice English and he can make money. Not just one day, not just one month, but we're talking about many years that he has to do that to make money and to educate himself. He was a very diligent young boy. So in order for you to become successful financially, first thing, whatever job you do, you must be very diligent and, and, and work hard okay, on your job. And the second one, once you earn money, okay, you somehow you need to find a way to save some money, not spend all the money that you earn. Okay? You need to know how to save the money, and there is a way to save the money, which I will explain a little bit later. And the third one, not only you work hard, you make some money, and then you start saving money, and you have to associate with good people. If you hang out with the wrong crowd, right, you may end up broke again. People may you know, lead you to something bad, like for example, uh, uh, drinking alcohol or, or do gambling or something like that, which is not good. And the last one, okay, living life economically. You know how much you make and you should, you should be able to manage your money according to the money that you have. You don't overspend your, your money. If one month you make $5,000, your expense should be less than that, not more than that, not opposite. You know, Jack Ma, again, he is a billionaire, but the way he lives his life is very humble. Many millionaires live life like that. Okay? They know the value of the money, okay? so they spend money wisely. And this is the, something that the, the Buddha suggests. It appears in the Buddhist text, how to proper use of your wealth. And I realized that you know, this kind of knowledge is not available anywhere. You know? Even in the MBA school, in the business school, people don't teach like this. So maybe this can add on you know, to your knowledge that you can apply when we talk about wealth or making money. The first one is, you know, you spend money for your own happiness, for something that necessarily about food, about clothing, about something that you really need. And that's one thing. And the second thing is not just entertain yourself or make yourself happy. You need to be careful to support your parents, your wife, your children and your subordinate or your servant as well. And the third one, you need to save some money in case of emergency or sickness because you never know. Future is unclear. You don't know what's coming up in your life, so you need to prepare. And the third one, not only making money and spending money, you need to at least you know, find a way to give to people, to donate, to do charitable work. A lot of people are suffering if you at that level the level that you can help others, then you choose five ways to help others as well. And the last one, to give to something else, for example, to your relative. Okay? If they need help, if you can help, you help them. To your friend and visitor. And the third one, this is something very unique. Maybe only appears in Buddhism that the Buddha suggests to uh, make merit to those who pass away. Our parents, uh, people we love, so we can send them the merit. And also, we share the merit with the deity. And deity, usually they cannot make merit by themselves. Okay? If we share them the merit, they would be very happy. And the last one, and this is again very important, you must pay tax. <laughs> if you are the business owner, you need to be honest and pay tax. Okay? If you can pay on time, you know, that's good. Make sure that you pay tax. That's how country can continue to develop and bring benefit to the people in the whole country. To make it a little bit easier to understand, we can look at this uh, chart together of how to manage our income. The first part is for your living expenses, whatever it is that you need to pay monthly, your rents, your car, your, your electric bill or your credit card bill and donation, whatever it is. This is the first 25% okay, that you, know, you can allocate for that. And the second part of your income, the second part of your income should go to saving account right away. Just keep it, don't touch it for the whole month. And that's another 25%. And another 50% 
this is go to investment. As a business owner, you need to think of the future. You need to find a way to expand your business. And this is how uh, the Buddha suggests the lay people how to manage their income in order for you to be success financially. And the second one, after we success financially, okay, we have enough money to live good life. And the second most desire of all human beings is called longevity, to live a really long life as possible. And why is that? What's the benefit of live long? You may think of that. If you can live long, what would benefit you and people you love and people who love you? Would it be nice if, if you can live long and, and do what you love for a very really long, long time? Would it be nice if you can stay you know, alive for a long time and impact people in a better way, help to make the world better, to live with the one you love for a very really long, long time? But there are many benefits of living long life. The Buddha said, it's very difficult to be born as a human being. Okay, that's what he said. It's very difficult to be born as a human being. That being born as the human being is one of the greatest gifts that we can receive. So in nowadays, people average age is about 75. In general, people can live up to 75. Some people live longer. Okay? Many people live shorter than that. But in average, people can live up to 75. If we are born here at point A, we are on our way to point B. You can check yourself where you are at, at the moment. If you can live up to 75 years, that means you have 27,375 days to live. Well, is it a lot? Not really. 27,000 days is not many days. So don't even say that, well, I have nothing to do. I, I should kill my time by watching movie, by going gambling or doing, playing game or something like that. We cannot kill time. It's opposite. Time is actually killing us. Every time you're breathing in and breathing out, you, know, you are killing yourself. Time is killing us. We die every moment. And we don't know when exactly that actual death will happen to us. We may not live until 75, as you can see. A lot of people die before that. Many people die at the young age. Okay? Not many people can live and die at the old age. Here is the thing, you know. This is quite interesting. The longest people that ever exist on the planet, she can live up to 122 years. The lady from France. But again, she died a long time ago. And this lady, she is Japanese. She is still alive. And now she is 117 years old. So from this statistic, it reminds us that, hey, human being, we can live more than 100 years. We can live more than 100 years. People who can live long imply that they have a very good health. They may be, you know, take good care of their health, physically, emotionally, do whatever it takes to have a good health so they can live long life. So why don't you set goal to live more than 100 years? We are not talking about something that's impossible. This is possible. So set goal to live long. And how to live long? Okay, these are the five things that, you know, maybe it can help you to live a little bit longer if you follow these five practices. The first one, uh, do your best to find a good um, living environment, okay? Such as the place where there is no pollution with the fresh air, you know, no noise, so you can have, you know, quality of life living in that kind of environment. And the second one is, we call the middle way approach, that means living life in balance. You know exercise is good, but don't over-exercise is not good. Eating healthy is good, but overeating is not good. Okay? Sleeping is good, but sleep too much, again, not good. Sleep too less, also not good either. And the third one, eat something that's easy to digest. Okay? Nowadays, people very worry about their health, so many people start eating less and less meat and moving toward vegetarian or vegan you know, uh, uh, living style. So you may adjust yourself according to uh, your own preference, whatever you feel comfortable, and then you can start, you know, look into this area to make yourself living healthier. And the number four is suitable timing. What I mean by that is, you know, you need to manage your time wisely. When it's time to work, you work, not work and eat. When it's time to eat, you enjoy eating, mindful eating. Okay, when it's time to sleep, you sleep, don't watch TV, not, don't watch movie. When it's time to exercise, you exercise. So you do one thing at a time. But look at people around you nowadays. People eat 
working, watching movie, listen to the music, check email and eating. They do many things at the same time. This is not good for your health. And then when you go to bed, you cannot sleep well because your subconscious mind is still thinking of what you have been doing before you're going to bed. And the last one, this is quite interesting, restraint from sensual pleasure. So overindulgence in sensual pleasure is not good for your health. So in Buddhist practice, we have something called the eight precepts, where people uh, observe eight precepts, get back to the simple life, so they don't watch movie, they don't listen to the music, they dress in a simple clothes, they don't even have dinner, they sleep on the thin bed, get back to the simple life. And that's how they detach themselves from material world. So it gives them a peace of mind when they practice the eight precepts or something like that. You can work around this area. And number three, after you have success in wealth, financially, you can live long life. And the third one that most people are looking for, but difficult to have, is called fame. Fame is reputation, good reputation. The question to you is, how would you like to be remembered when you depart, when you die? How would you like to be remembered? There are two kinds of memory. People can think of you as a, in a positive way, as a good person, or think of you in a negative way, as a bad person. It depends on your behavior. When people think of you in a positive way, that means you are a good person. People have some good memory about you because of the thing that you did because of the thing that you have done for them. That's why people remember you in a good way. You have to have some sort of ethical value that people can think of you in a positive way. And this is something that may be helpful for you. In order for people to think of you in a good way, you need to have some sort of ethical behavior. And this is some ethical behavior standard that you can look into that help you to be a good person. The first one, truthfulness. Truthfulness. It's very important. You gain respect when you speak the truth. You do what you say, you say what you do. You keep your promise. If you husband and wife, you will not cheat to each other. You will be honest to each other. And that is truthfulness. If you're the boss, you, know, you pay on time, you treat your employee well, you're sincere with everyone that you're dealing with. And that's truthfulness. And the second one, taming yourself. You know, taming yourself means mean train yourself to be a better person. There are many rooms that we can improve ourselves to be a better person. And that's something you should keep in mind. Uh, Self-control. Self-control means you, know, you need to be able to control yourself. Be open-minded, learn to understand you know, people around you, be flexible. And the third one is tolerance or be patient. Nowadays, you know, life is tough. Everything is moving very fast. You, know, you need to be able to maintain your emotion. Be, uh, be patient, be tolerant. Okay? Learn how to forgive, learn how to forget, know what to say and know when to say. This is again very important. And the last one, you know, be kind, generosity. Give whenever you have a chance. It doesn't mean you have to give people money or stuff, okay? You can give them, you know, a good word, a word of wisdom, a word that cheer people up, a word of unity. If you're husband, you can speak with your spouse or speak with your children in a nice manner, something like this. So this creates the harmony. So by following these four virtues can enhance you to become a better person, a likable person. People will think of you in a better way. And the last one, a heaven world. What is a heaven world? This is something that many people in this world are expect to have, but again, it's difficult to have. In many religions, there are teachings that talk about life after death, whether uh, uh, the religions that believe in God, like Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, or the religions that don't believe in God, like Buddhism. Okay? We also have something similar that talking about the life after death. And the sad thing is that this is what the Buddha said. Only a few are being reborn in heaven world. Very rare for someone as a human being, if, the, that, if that human die, it's difficult for him to be reborn in a heaven world. Far more are those reborn elsewhere. Many people, after they die, they're born somewhere else, not in heaven. Okay? The Buddha emphasized that only a few people will be able to be reborn in a heaven world or in a good place after they die. The thing is, how can we make sure that we will be born in a heaven world 
or we will be born in a good place. That's something that's quite interesting and it's very hard to find the answer. So how to secure a heaven world? The first one, you must have faith. Have faith in what? Okay, if you Buddhist, you may have faith in the Buddha or the Dhamma or the teaching of the Buddha. Right? If you are non-Buddhist, you probably you need to have faith to your religious leader like God or the religious founder. Because once we have faith in our teacher and then we are willing to follow his teaching. So faith is the starting point that leads us to heaven. And the second one is moral virtue. Every religious talk about virtue or ethical conduct that everyone should be followed in that particular religion. In Buddhism, we have something called the five precepts. What are the five precepts? Five precepts. The five precepts include all five things that everyone should practice. The first one is abstaining from killing or harming others. That is not a good thing. The second thing is abstain from stealing stuff, taking what does not belong to you. Right? And the third one is abstaining from sexual misconduct. Okay? You should be honest to your spouse and children. And the fourth one is abstaining from false speech. You should speak only the truth. And the last one is abstaining from intoxicant. Okay? Don't intoxicate yourself, something that makes your mind scatter, that is not good. In, in Christianity or uh, Jewism, they have something called Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, that's something that everyone should follow. If you follow that, it will lead you to good life. And that good life will lead you to the better place after you die. That's the idea of the morality. And the third one is charity. Charity or donation or giving is something very, is a common practice in all religions. Even though people who don't believe in any, anything, they also practice you know, charity or giving. Same thing in Buddhism or it, in Christianity, okay, we are encouraged to give, to donate to people who need it. Islam, they have something called the Sagat as well. Sagat is the way that uh, all the Muslims must give according to their practice. There is a proper way to give. Okay? There is a criteria how much you should give and uh, what kind of thing that you can give or something like that. There are details, but in general, everyone should practice uh, giving or charity. And the last one is practice of the wisdom. In this case, in Buddhism, wisdom means you know, we, we practice to develop our mind to get rid of the mental impurity. When we're talking about greed, we're talking about uh, anger, we're talking about delusion, okay? we find a way to get rid of this kind of mental impurity. So once we have purified our mind, then the mind is clear. That clear mind can give us the highest wisdom and that highest wisdom can lead life to liberation and that liberation again can take us to heaven okay so these are the four things that you might want to be considered and put it on practice so in summary we have talked about the four basic things that human being wants the most the first one is wealthy financially secure okay that's number one the second one is to live long life okay that means you have to maintain a very good health in order to live long and the third one, we talk about fame or good reputation. And the last one, we talk about the heaven world. These are the four things that human being, you know, in general wants the most. But again, it's very difficult to achieve. My question to you is, where in these four areas that you are weak and how can you improve it? Where in these four areas that you feel like, I am confident, I already achieved that. And which area that you feel very weak that you need to work on that you know, a little bit harder. So reflect on yourself and put everything that you learn today into practice. Just a little bit thing before we finish. Uh, you may have known this person, Robert Kiyosaki, the guy who wrote the book Rich Dad and Poor Dad. He is one of the richest men, very successful business person. He, he said, I have all the money and success I ever wanted to have but I'm not sure whether I am happy or not. So success and money is not the same thing as happiness. So with the person in that level, with all the money, all the success that he has gained, he's still not sure whether he's happy or not. So you better reflect on your own self. Everything that you are chasing after, money, fame, you know, uh, property, business, whatever it is, that is really give you happiness at the moment. A lot of people sacrifice their life work hard to make more money. At the same time, they deteriorate their health. So at the end of the day, they may make a lot of money, but they're very sick. Their health is not good. So they need to spend a lot of money on fixing their health, 
paying paying to the hospital or paying to the doctor and that is not worth it right so you should find a way to balance your life okay having life happily you don't have to be the richest person on earth but you know if you can tell yourself that hey i am a happy person i enjoy what i have i feel content of what i have i have no debt i have a good family you know my my business is going good i'm happy for what i am at the moment so you probably on the right track of having good life let me end with this i style one said you know a calm and moderate life bring more happiness than what than the pursuit of success combined with constant restlessness this is quite similar to the idea of the buddha simple life is the middle way simple life is moderation so if we can live life with calm and modest life with content of what we have and then you know maybe happiness is not far away instead of you running around uh, chasing success after success that that may not give you the happiness at the end of the day this two book maybe for you who are interested in having healthy life i found this two book very interesting the first book is called how not to die okay this one how not to die is written by dr michael uh, gregger in uh, 2015 talking about scientific uh, dietary how can the food that we eat prevent the disease um, by eating uh, the right food and right nutrition we can live a very long long life and the second book is called a hundred of way to live 100 quite interesting book is uh, it was written by dr mao ching he is a chinese doctor he learned a lot of things from his ancestor and he put that knowledge into one book he talk about a little thing that can help people to live longer for example by dropping a few drop of honey with a cup of tea it help boosting your immune system he learned by experience and he put everything together into this book with that i'm done for today okay so ask yourself what do you want the most in your life and how to achieve that how to live life successfully and happily think a little bit stop a little bit and reflect on your own self before you moving forward so rejoice in everyone's merit